Well, today's the moment that we've all been waiting for, and well, actually probably about a month and a half from now when I'm actually probably mowing this yard is what I'm waiting for, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We gotta get some things done today first in order to make that happen. So today is gonna to be all about our seeding process, everything that goes along with that. And it's getting hot out here already. It's gonna be a very hot day, so I wanna get rolling on this, so let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do today is spray the ground with tenacity right before I put the seed down. This is really the only type of weed pre-emergent that I know of that you, you can use at the time of seeding. Now it doesn't work for every single grass type so you do have to be a little bit careful there. But for the majority it's most of them and I've heard really good things about this product so this is the first time I'm actually using it. But you need very very little and it goes a long way. So the first thing I'm going to do today is spray that dirt out there and then we'll get the seed on top of it roll that in and then we'll be covering it up with some peat moss and uh, I'll go through the whole process with you. I'm spraying an area today that's about 1100 square feet, somewhere right around there. So all we need for this Tenacity product is 0.5 teaspoons per thousand square feet. They give you this little measuring thing that comes with it which is going to help you because it has teaspoons right on here. So all I need is a half of a teaspoon and since I have just over a thousand square feet I'll go just a touch more but I don't need much more than that. And then I'm going to put that into a gallon, just over a gallon of water in my sprayer. Spray that out over the soil. And I don't think I'm going to use a marking dye today because I have flat dirt there. So I don't think that it'll be too much of a problem for me to see where I've sprayed and where I haven't. Uh, but you can use a dye if you think you would like to. Or if you don't have dirt like I do and you want to make sure you know where you're spraying. It's time now for our actual seeding portion and depending on what type of seed you use you're going to have different rates. So I'm going with a ryegrass bluegrass mix. It's 50-50, three types of ryegrass, three types of bluegrass, all elite varieties. So for me if I was going straight rye it'd be more like eight pounds per thousand and Kentucky bluegrass is a lot less because the seeds are very very tiny so you don't need as many of them so usually it's around two to three pounds per thousand. So with these mixed together Drew from Seed Superstore told me are right around five pounds per thousand. Now, do I need to get really, really technical and make sure it's exactly five pounds? No, I don't necessarily need to do that. So today, I know that I have a 25 pound bag. I have just over 1,000 square feet to cover. It's so gonna put probably around one third of that bag into my spreader. That'd be about just over six pounds and that should cover my about 1,100 square foot section here. So we're just gonna set the spreader at a really low rate and then just start going over the yard, go in multiple directions, and that way we know that we're just getting even coverage and we're not starting out too heavy. All of a sudden we run out on one side because we went too heavy. So just start out really slow with your spreader. It's better to keep walking and walking and walking than to miss some sections or have some sections that are too heavy. One thing I forgot to mention as well is what would happen if you put the seed on too heavy. So obviously if it's too light it's just going to take longer to fill in and maybe you'll have a few bare spots that you miss too. But if you go too heavy most people think just throw down as much seed as you'd like to throw down. Well in reality 
I've actually had some problems with this before of something called overcrowding. So if you throw down too much seed and you're seeing it almost in like small piles. So then once this grows up, not every single one of those seeds is one blade of grass. It's one grass plant and all those little plants start to grow leaves off of there and it becomes a much bigger plant. So you have to remember that we don't want to crowd those together too much because we want them to spread out over time and start growing more naturally. So if you do overcrowd things, I've had some problems with some die off in the past and also just a little bit of fungus because it gets so much moisture all in one spot and then it's very easy for fungus to attack new grass as well. So just keep that in mind. Right now that I've made a couple passes here, I just wanted to stop and kind of show you the even distribution. So you can see kind of all the seed evenly put out there. And I'm gonna go a little bit heavier yet than this, but as you can see, there's no piles anywhere. Everything's looking even and nice, and that's exactly what we want. All right, here's what I'm left with after putting down the seed. Of course, I'll get down and show you a better view here in a second, but I just want to show you a top view as well. So I have plenty of seed left over here knowing that probably a couple weeks into this I'll be able to see where I might need to overseed a little bit. Of course we don't know what's going to happen with the weather as well. We could have some kind of storms that kind of put a little wrench into my plan over there. So. Make sure that you also have some extra seed on hand that you don't use at all, preferably, just because you're gonna need to fix a few things over time. All right, moving right along here today, the next thing you need to do is rake this thing in just very, very lightly. You could probably get away with not doing this if you're gonna be covering the seed like I am. However, I don't wanna put it too far under the surface, but I do just wanna make sure that we're getting the good seed to soil contact. So I'm going to very very lightly rake that in then we're going to roll it with a roller to make sure that the seed is touching the soil getting really good contact there then we're going to cover it with a very light layer of peat moss but first about that raking you can use something like just like a wire rake like this or what i'm going to try to use today which i like to use as well is this thing right here and this is a thatch rake however on this side right here that has the straight tines, that's going to be for your dethatching. But on this side, you have uh, some tines that have just a little curve on the bottom. And what that's for is actually for soil cultivation. It works really well to just lightly put some seed under that soil right in the layer of soil where we want. So we wanted about a quarter of an inch below. Like I said, if we weren't covering, that's probably ideal. You don't want to go any lower than that. If we are covering with a light layer, you probably could technically leave it on the soil and everything would be fine. But I'm just gonna lightly rake this with this side here that has the tines that have the little curve in them. And so you can kind of do either one, doesn't really matter, but if you do happen to have one of these tools or you would like to get one of these, they're useful for a lot of things. And uh, I've been using it a lot in this project to kind of help dig up my dirt every once in a while and just even things out there too. time now to roll in the seed and again we're doing this just to get good seed to soil contact. That seed will be rolled right into the ground and then we'll come over with just a light layer of peat moss and we will be ready to go. Alright so that rolling is done and I know we're kind of feels like we're just doing step by step by step today but really that is how it's working out today so now I have to do some starter fertilizer on top of here then the peat moss so as I mentioned it's time for the starter fertilizer and I'm gonna be personally using this Lesco stuff you don't really have to use this specific thing if you don't want to but I happen to have some from earlier this season so I'm just gonna use that up but this one is the 1424 
And uh, if you get this Lesco brand from Home Depot or I think on Amazon as well, it might be at 1824. Uh, I can't remember the exact numbers there, but it's something just a little bit different. Not really a huge difference there in the numbers, but just keep that in mind if you're seeing what I'm using. So the reason for this starter fertilizer going on is that it has a lot of phosphorus in it, which helps the new seedlings to grow roots. And so it's just a little bit of extra food for that new grass to kind of grow in a little bit better. So on a new yard like this, I would normally hit this right away. And then as I've mentioned before, if you're doing an overseeding where there's actual grass already in place, I'd probably wait a couple days after you seed to put down something like this just because the actual starter fertilizer will give the grass there as well a real jump up and then you kind of are fighting with the existing grass versus the new seed. So I've already talked about that in previous videos but I just want to kind of mention that real quickly again. And so time for starter fertilizer. Our next process is one that can get a little bit messy, but it's one that in my experience has been very helpful when I've been doing overseeding projects or seeding in general, and that is adding some peat moths on top of here. Now we want a light layer on here to just kind of hold on some moisture, make sure we cover up the seed so it doesn't get as disturbed from rainstorms and birds and, and things like that. But it specifically helps a lot with just holding on to that moisture there on the top of the surface. It's still going to be hot here coming up it looks like gonna help me a little bit to cover up that seed and not let it dry out as easily from the sun. So I just picked up whatever you can get at the store, nothing special here, and then we'll start spreading it and I'll kind of show you how I do it. I got, I got started here to make sure that my method was still going to work for what I'm doing this time. But so if you have a small area like I do, I prefer to just spread this out by hand. And of course it is going to take a while, that's for sure. But I feel like I get a little bit better coverage and even coverage when I kind of put it down by hand. So I just kind of grab it in my hands and kind of shake it out like this as I'm putting it onto the ground. And it's a very fine material. So you can kind of just use that as a shaker. Put it down on your soil there and it feels like it gives a very even layer to me. Now if you had a big yard, you'd probably be resorting to maybe looking into a peat moss spreader. They do make those. And then otherwise, you could probably just dump this out onto the yard in piles and rake it around as best as you could. But since I have everything leveled as good as I can right now, and I don't really want to disturb anything by doing a bunch of raking again, I'm going to just continue by hand. Okay, well here's where we're at when of course Ryan runs out of peat moss. Also when I told you that it could get dirty, uh, check out my arms. Yeah, a little bit dirty. Well we finally did it. I'm an absolute mess here. Still filthy from all that peat moss, but everything's down today. Now I just have to start watering it, and I'll make a whole new video about watering. So I'll kind of explain everything then. But on this first time here, I'm just going to give it a good soaking, make sure that I don't have any puddles or things running around. But we want to give it just a little bit of a good soaking here to start out. And then in the next video, I'll explain a little bit more about my watering and how to do that part as well. So thanks so much for watching this today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and we'll see you next time.